Hey guys, it's Graham with Tutorial Clarity, and in this lesson I'll be showing you how to create an underground style animation. It's really just an abstract wave with some text and an adjustment layer. But uh, yeah, check it out. So yeah, basically I'm just using the trap code form pl uh, plugin. Excuse me. So be sure to have that. Um, honestly, it kind of reminds me of the waving parallel universes. You know? Like the ones in string theory or in theory. You know, invented by those brilliant physicists. Yup. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go to composition up here. And then new composition. And go ahead and pause the video if you need to. But just have all my settings. 1280. 720 and I'm going to set the duration to 8 seconds. All right. But before we start applying effects, we're going to need to create a few layers. So we're going to start off by creating our trap code form particle layer, and I'm going to do that by going to layer, new, and solid. And I'm going to call this particles as always. I have my color set to black, make comp size, hit okay. Next layer that we're going to create is our text layer layer new text and I'm just gonna type in some text here it can really be whatever you want I'm typing world collisions and I really like the century gothic font I have it set to about 30 pixels to keep that kinda sleek look it's just the way I prefer it I'm gonna drag that over here for now and uh, the next layer that we're gonna create is our adjustment layer layer new adjustment layer and that's pretty much it. Um, down here, I'm going to rename the adjustment layer by left-clicking on it and hitting Enter on the keyboard, and then typing in Switch. Because what we're going to be doing is using a switch slash blur effect uh, tied to this, and it's, uh, it's going to create that effect that you saw in between the two scenes in the video. So to start off, we're going to actually create the wave itself. So I'm going to cl click on the Particles layer, <coughs> and I'm going to rename this to Particles 1. And that'll be easy to understand later because we're going to end up splitting all these layers. But uh, we'll get along to that. Particles 1, and then I'm going to go to layer, I'm sorry, effect, excuse me, and then trap code form. Great plugin. Great, great, great plugin. Very useful. So we're just going to be applying some settings here. Um, the base form. And we're going to set the, yeah, just pull down the base form. Make sure the box form is set to grid by default. And size X, I'm going to make that really long, 1340. I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard, set the size Y to about 950, and the size Z to, let's say, 200. Uh, going on, particles in X, we're going to set that to about 350. Particles in Y, set that to about 600. And particles in Z, we're going to set that to 1. And that means there's only going to be one plane of particles. Um, believe it or not, we're actually almost done with this. We're going to go down to another very useful uh, property effector to this form, and we're going to go to Fractal Field. Very, very good aspect of the Trap Code form plugin. We're going to set the Displace to 170. And give that a second. You can already see it's turning out pretty cool. We're going to come down here and set the Flow Evolution to 110. 110 and let's scroll down we'll change the F scale frequency scale to about 4.0 and the octave multiplier or octave scale I'm sorry we're gonna leave the octave multiplier octave scale is gonna be 1.8 and that is looking pretty nice pretty nice I'm gonna drag my world collisions text to a better location probably about there it's more readable more readable Anyway, so to get to that blur effect, uh, we need to apply a directional blur to our adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on my adjustment layer called Switch here, and I'm going to go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and then Directional Blur. And what we're going to need to do is from the get-go, it kind of blurs in. starts off on the very first frame, so I'm going to pull down here, go to Effect, Directional Blur, and we're going to leave the direction at zero because I prefer it to be completely up and down for this type of effect, but 
You can change that if you like. Basically, we're going to left click on the stopwatch here from the zero or first frame all the way up to 15 frames. That's about good because I like it to be very quick. Technically, 30 frames would be our compositions at 30 frames a second. So if I move to 30 frames, it converts over to one second. I'm going to go to about half a second, and that's 15 frames. So I'm going to set the blur length to zero again by clicking this little diamond shaped button, and that inserts a keyframe. We're going to go back to the very beginning, make sure we're on that frame, and uh, double click this. Gives us a pop up called blur length. And we're going to set the value to 55. So the very first frame, this thing comes in, blurs everything below it. And on the 15th frame, sorry for the video lag, it goes back to normal.